Welcome to the FOM 11 introductory assignment walkthrough. This is the fourth in the series and it's about linear systems. Let's keep going. So what does solving linear systems actually mean? It means that you're, if you're given two different equations for lines like these two here, what could x and y be to make both of these equations true? For instance, if x was 1 and y was 4, um, this equation would absolutely be true. But if x was 1 and 4, 4 is equal to 1, negative 1 half times 1, 4 does not equal negative a half. So this is not a good solution for these two. What we're doing is we're looking for an x, y that makes both of these equations true. There are a few different ways to find the x, y solution. So we could guess like we just did, and don't use that method, it's terrible. <laughs> um, but the other three that we're going to look at today are we can solve it graphically, we can solve it algebraic using substitution, and we can solve it algebraically using elimination. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph these lines. Um, y is equal to x plus 3. So let's graph that. Remember that y is equal to mx plus b, and this is the y-intercept, and this is the slope, which is going to be rise over run. So we're going to start with the y-intercept here. So for this one here, we're going to start with the plus 3, and we're going to go up the y-axis all the way up to 1, 2, 3, and put a dot there, because the line is going to cross through that point. And it makes sense. When x is equal to 0, not right or left, y is going to be 1, 2, 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope, which is invisible here, but we know that it's like 1x or 1 over 1x. So we're going to rise 1, run once, or rise negative 1, run negative 1, rise negative 1, negative 1. And there's going to be our first line. Our second line here is this one. And it doesn't have a b, but it's understood that it's plus 0. So again, when we're plotting these lines, we're going to start with the y-intercept, which is going to be at 0. y is neither up nor down. It's at 0. And the slope is going to be rise over run, which is negative 1 over 2. So it could be negative 1 over 1, 2, negative 1 rise over run of 2, or it could be 1 over negative 2, too. So it's rise of 1 and backwards negative 2. Rise of 1, backwards 2. And there's going to be our line. And I drew it a little bit funny. It should go right through this point here. And so our solution is going to be right here, this point here. And it's going to be at negative 2, comma, 1. Negative 2, comma, 1. All right, let's do the other example. y is equal to x. Well, we know that the b is going to be 0, and the slope is going to be 1 over 1. And so let's plot that. We're going to start with the point at the y-intercept, which is 0, and the rise up 1 over 1, up 1 over positive 1, up and over positive 1, or down 1 and backwards 1. And here, we're, let's do this one. This is like the y-intercept is negative 4, so it's going to be a point right here at negative 4. And the slope is going to be negative 1 over 1. So we could go down 1 over 1. But that's off our chart. So we're going to go up 1 and backwards 1. Up 1 and backwards 1. You can tell that our the, where the lines cross is the solution here. Remember, x then y. So we're going to go backwards negative 2 and then down negative 2. So negative 2 comma negative 2. And the great thing is you can test this out. If you put negative 2 and negative 2 in here, negative 2 does equal negative 2. Negative, negative 2, or negative, a sub, a negative 2 is like a plus 2, so minus 2 is equal to 2 minus 4. Negative 2 does equal negative 2, so we know that it's checked. And you can check each and every one of these if you want, just to make sure you got the right solution. There is another way to graph our lines, and that's using the Desmos calculator. So I'm going to show you that right now. So we're going to open up desmos.com slash calculator, type in the equations, and it graphs it for you. And of course, the solution is where the two lines meet, and you can see that it is at 0, 0,3 in this example. Before moving on, um, I want to point out one thing, is that there is not always one solution to these. So I want to show you three different cases. The first case is perpendicular lines and intersecting lines. Perpendicular means that this angle um, between the two lines is 90 degrees. 
That's what perpendicular means. And intersecting lines are ones that cross each other. So here's two different examples. And what we can see is that the slope is different. So because there are different slopes, there's one solution. For parallel lines, you can see that the slope is exactly the same and the y-intercept is different. So this one, the y-intercept is at zero and the blue line, the y-intercept is at negative one. They will never cross. So parallel lines have zero solutions. And if they're the same lines, for instance, these two happen to be the same line. If you divide everything by two on this bottom line, it'll look like the top one. So if it's the same slope and the same y-intercept, then there's an infinite amount of solutions. The next method we can solve these kinds of equations is using the algebraic method of substitution. And essentially, I just want to make a few points here. So what our steps are going to be to rewrite one of the equations so that x is equal to something or y is equal to something. And here we have y is equal to something. So that's fantastic. We're already ahead of the game. We're going to substitute this into the other equation for the y. So we're going to pop this whole piece into the y and then find out what x is equal to and finally substitute this answer in for the other variable. So I'm going to show you all this here. So we have here, the first step is to make y is equal to something. It's already done for us. So we're going to take the y equals, the, the part that it equals, and we're going to replace this y in the other equation with the negative x plus 4. So let's rewrite this. 2x minus 3 times, this is going to be the negative x plus 4 is equal to 8. Okay, no problem. Now we just have x's in there, so we can actually solve it. Um, this is like saying 2 times x minus 3 times whatever is in the brackets is equal to 8. So let's multiply this negative 3 to everything inside the brackets. And we're not going to forget the negative either. So the 2x is still the same. The negative 3 times negative x is going to be positive 3x. And the negative 3 times the positive 4 is going to give us negative 12 is equal to 8. Now we want to get all the x's on one side and all the numbers on the other, so let's do the opposite of subtracting 12, which is going to add 12. But if we do it to one side, we've got to do it to the other. These will cancel out. Um, we can group these. I'm going to do this one step here. So 2x plus 3x is 5x's. These have cancelled out, and 8 plus 12 is 20. Now we have 5 times x is equal to 12. Let's do the opposite of multiplying by 5. Let's divide by 5. And of course, we've got to do it to both sides. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, or 1x is equal to 4. Okay, well, we're more than halfway done here. What we're going to do is we're going to take this x is equal to 4, and we're going to pop it into either this one or this one. Doesn't matter which one, they'll both work out to the exact same number, as long as your math is right. Um, so what I tend to do is choose the one with the smaller numbers or the easier math, and it happens to be this one. So let's do it. I'm going to just rewrite this here, and I'm going to replace my x with a 4. So I'm going to say y is equal to negative 4 plus 4. And negative 4 plus 4, so y is equal to 0. And so you can leave your answer as x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 0, or you can leave it as a coordinate pair. So it's going to be x comma y or 4 comma 0. And that is the solution for this one. Okay. Same deal. The first step is to rewrite one of the equations so it's x equals something or y equals something. And because the y is, there's just one y, I'm going to use the y equals something only because if I use the x, it's going to involve fractions and I want to <laughs> seriously avoid fractions. So I'm going to rewrite this here. Um, I want y all on one side of the equal, so I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. So I have y is equal to negative 8x minus 14. Okay, now that I have y is equal to something, I'm going to replace this y with everything in here. So I'll just rewrite my expression. Negative 7x minus, and then everything in the brackets. So negative 8x minus 14 is equal to 13. So again, all I've done is I've taken this equation here, and I've replaced y with this piece. All right, we have negative times everything in the bracket. So this is like negative 1 times everything. And I'm going to multiply it through. 
to everything inside the bracket. So the negative 7x stays the same. Negative 1 times negative 8x is equal to positive 8x. And negative 1 times negative 14 is positive 14, or plus 14. I'm going to do two steps in one here. I'm going to group these like terms. So negative 7x plus 8x gives me positive 1x. So I'm just going to put just 1x or x there. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move these numbers to the other side because I'm going to want x all by itself. So I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. These will cancel out and I will have negative 1. So the first half, the long half, x is equal to negative 1. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that negative 1 and I'm going to pop it into um, either this one or this one. Both will give you the same um, answer. So I'm going to choose the second one just for fun. So we have 8 times our negative 1. So instead of x, I'm putting negative 1 in there. Plus y is equal to minus 14. So negative 8 plus y is equal to negative 14. I'm going to add 8 to both sides y is equal to negative 14 plus 8. I have more negatives, so that's going to be about negative 6. And just to prove that it works the other way, negative 7 times negative 1 minus y is equal to 13. 7 minus y is equal to 13. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. y is equal to 6. But that's a negative y because I still have this negative, so I'm going to divide by negative 1, divide by <coughs> negative 1, and y is equal to negative 6. Same thing. So the answer to this is negative 1, comma, negative 6. The second way that we can use algebra to determine the solution is to use a technique called elimination. This is kind of similar to the other one. Um, slightly different rules, though. So our first step is we're going to add up the equations. And you see how I'm stacked up as x above the x, the y above the y, and the number above the number. Um, this is exactly what we want. Um, or at least we need one of them stacked up above the other. So we're going to stack up the equations and add them up so that one variable will cancel out. Um, if necessary, we can multiply everything with it but in an equation. Let's hold on to step number two. This, is, this example will have the step number two. Um, once the variables cancel out, you can solve for the other variable. And finally, we're going to substitute that known variable into one of the equations, just like we did in the last one. The x plus the x would be 2x. It'd be nice if one of these was a negative, but it isn't. And we can fix that. But we're going to look in this column, and we have a negative 3y and a positive 3y. If we add those together, it's going to make a 0y, which is exactly what we want which means we don't even have to write it in there. So let's add them up. x plus x is 2x. Negative 3y plus 3y is 0. 0y zero or 0. So I can just leave it out. And 14 and 26 is 40. OK, this is really fast. Um, we have two x's. We just want one. So instead of multiplying by 2, we're going to do the opposite, which is divide by 2. And we have to do it to both sides, obviously. And x is equal to 20. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pop this value of x is 20 into one of these two. And it doesn't matter again which one. Um, I'm going to do this one only, well, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do this one maybe. So let's say 20 minus 3y is equal to 14. I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. So negative 3y is equal to negative 6. And I don't want negative 3y's. I just want 1y. So I'm going to divide by negative 3 divide by negative 3. And I'm only dividing because negative 3 is multiplied to y. And the opposite in multiplication is division. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 gives me 1. So y is equal to 2. And that's the solution for that one. Okay, let's look at the next one here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding these up. But if we add these up, we're not going to eliminate either of the variables. So what we need to do is we need to make sure there is a positive version on the top or the bottom and it's negative on the, the opposite side. Um, if I doubled this, this negative x, um, that would work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 2 times and 2 times. So rewriting the first one. And here I have 2 times negative x, which is negative 2x, and 2 times 6y, because i got to bomb it into both sides, is going to be plus 12y is equal to 40. Now if I add these two lines up, 
one of the variables is going to cancel out, which is what we want. These two will cancel out. So I have 15y equals 45. I don't want 15 y's, I just want one. So instead of having 15 times y, I'm going to do the opposite of times. I'm going to um, divide by 15 and divide by 15. So y is equal to 3. Very reasonable number. And I'm going to plug that in to one of these three, these two. Because this one is positive, that's probably the one I'm going to choose. So I have 2x plus 3. And instead of y, I'm going to put in a 3. is equal to 5. So 2x plus 9 is equal to 5. I'm going to subtract 9. Subtract 9. 2x is equal to, and that's going to be negative 4. And I'm going to divide by 2 for both sides. So x is equal to negative 2. So again, in this example, if I feed negative 2 comma 3 in for the x and the y of both of these, these will both be true statements. Both sides will equal each other.